The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. It's time to get back to work on our quadcopter. Last week, we tested all of the parts with a basic frame. Today, we'll build the final frame, install all the parts, and hopefully, fingers crossed, take it out for a test flight. We've got a lot to do, so we'd better get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I'd like to show you this mech that I've got going here for America's Most Haunted. Now, there is a bank of drop targets in that game that move up and down, and it's a completely custom assembly. Here, we want to use this off-the-shelf assembly that we can buy used for games like Attack from Mars and Spider-Man, but we still had to make our own motor mount to drive it. So we have to make sure it's going to work. So we 3D printed a plastic version. We've been testing it for several days now, all day. And if the plastic one holds up, we certainly know that it'll work when we switch it to metal. So just another part of making pinball. Testing, testing, testing. Let's start building the frame. I lasered these arms out of 1 8 inch plywood. I'm going to make it arms first and then the center hub. That way the arms can be removable, so if they break, you can swap them out. Even though I'm only building four, so I really won't be able to do that, but whatever. So the basic idea is there's an arm, and then we have these support structures that go out to it. So it'll kind of look like a Zeppelin, or some sort of, you know, superstructure when it's done. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna use this toothpick to pick up glue. Yeah. I'm gonna glue these in place, but I'll probably also uh, use some straps as well, just to kind of give it two forms of connection. Again, it's my first quadcopter. I'm really not sure if wood is the best material, but one thing about wood is it's light, and it's really easy for me to laser, so that's why I went with it. The top ones have teeth coming up to the ends, and the bottom ones don't. That way they can interlock over the center piece. Now that's glued, I'm going to weigh it down using these drill bits. All right, we'll repeat that for the other three arms. Now that we have the arms completed, we're going to attach things to them. The first thing will be this red landing gear. I 3D printed these, and I covered them with acetone, so hopefully they have a little bit of strength. They might break on the first landing, but it's worth a shot. Something else we should do is um, spray paint one of these arms a different color on the bottom so when we're flying the quadcopter around, we know which way is forward on the quadcopter. We can see it from underneath, so we'll have to remember to do that. The next step will be attaching the motor. All right, here's one of our motors. And we need its base bracket and the adapter. Where did I, oh, there it is. So, this bracket is what goes on the motor itself, and the bracket is what attaches to our quadcopter frame. All the screws are flathead, so it'll fit flush against the base of our frame. Fly, yes. Land, no. You know, when I was a young kid, I always thought remote control airplanes would be a really cool hobby, but uh, it's also a very expensive hobby. So I'm kind of glad I didn't get into it when I was a kid because Everything probably would have crashed and cost a lot of money and I wouldn't have had anything to show for it. So here we are like 30 years later and it's like, hmm, now can I make it fly? We've got a program on the computer that allows you to uh, simulate flying a quadcopter. I'll probably use that to test my skills before I actually put this thing into the air. And even when I do fly this thing, I'm gonna be very conservative about it. Just a few feet off the ground, you know, so I can land it properly. That's the big thing, is landing. So we attach these adapters to the top and the bottom of the motor. This top adapter is actually what receives the propeller. We'll get to that later. This is gonna go right here on our arm. And then we have to put screws down to the top. These are all 
metric screws that I'm using for this project. Put those guys in. And then we'll secure them with nuts on the bottom. With our motor in place, we can attach our electronic speed controller. And again, we have these nice little bullet connectors, so it's basically a plug and play. I always like making things you can easily take apart. And this quad copter will be no exception. I'm probably even gonna add some Molex connectors onto this end of it, so you can easily remove the entire arm with no soldering. So that's basically it, one arm, I got the motor, it's attached, my landing gear, we'll see how well that works, and the connect. So I'm gonna finish making the other three arms and then we'll start on the center that the arms hook up to, the hub. So these screws will come up from the bottom. Now that's going to hold the power distribution and the brain. So I want to put this like so. That's where the power hooks up. And then we'll have some spacers and then the flight controller will go on top of that. I'm gonna make sure the battery attaches first before I wire up my disconnects. In a lot of projects, you have to kind of do uh, B, C, D before you can do A. So that's why I'm kind of doing it in that order. So there's gonna be a panel here at the bottom which screws up into those set screws you saw earlier. And that's what hold the battery in place. We wanna make sure the battery is centered for balance purposes. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, your dev kit HQ. We've got our battery installed in our center hub. And in our power distribution PCB, we've attached these Molex Disconnect KK connectors so we can easily attach or detach the arms. So let's attach the arms now. This is our front arm. I spray painted it so you know which way is forward on the unit. So the arms should just kind of slide into place. Probably a tight fit, but that's good. There we go. Oh, and then it has to straddle the battery. There we go. Uh, my landing legs are kind of lame. I'm reprinting some new ones, but we can still put it together in the meantime. There we go. Okay, let's attach the rear one. Oh wait, some of these have different bolts, so they'll straddle the battery. See how it has to straddle the battery? Use the shorter bolts for those. And remember that square that was in here originally with the captive nuts? These flat pieces bump up against that and that's how it all lines up. So when you put it all together, it should be fairly solid. Come on. I guess I could champ at that. There we go. All right, now, if our crappy legs hold up, there we go. Now check out these disconnects. You just plug them right in. See, that's a lot more, that's a lot more slick than soldering it. I just think it's a lot more convenient to have disconnects. It takes longer to hook up, but it uh, makes it easier to use in the long run. There goes one of my crappy legs. I think I didn't try to land with one of those. <laughs> now these guys, see how I've cut the wires on them? These things also act as power regulators, so they send five volts back to your flight control brain. However, we only wanna send one five volt rail back to this, not four different ones, so all of these have had their five volt lines cut, except for this guy, so that'll be our brain driver. And with those in place, 
We install this with the arrows pointing forward. There we go. And then these plug in here. We have a nice big fat LED for our armed light. Now we're back to where we were in the previous episode, but we have it installed in our new quadcopter frame. So I'm gonna plug it in, arm it, and see if all the motors go. How do you like my power switch here? <clears throat> there it is. Turn this on, throttle down to the right, arm, nice big arm light, can't miss it. There we go. Okay. Make sure they're all going the right direction. Okay, these two are supposed to be counterclockwise. Uh, that, oh, I guess I can slow it down. Oh, whoa, oh, wrong way. And that's how I lost my finger. And these are clockwise. Okay, that one's right. That one is not right. Okay, so I have to switch the polarity on this one, and then they'll all be going the correct direction. So we saw the motors rotating in different directions, and you also need different types of propellers, right-hand propellers and regular propellers. So we're gonna use this fan to simulate the downward draft from the propeller. Okay, this one is rotating counterclockwise. So we'll put it on the counterclockwise motors. And here's the other type of propeller. It'll spin the other way. So we put that on the clockwise propellers. So we put this on the clockwise motors. So we put this on the clockwise motors. Now that we know the way each propeller moves, I'm going to stick them on and make sure they all have downdraft, even though these are rotating one way and these are rotating the other. Uh, I will just be, this will be a very brief test because yeah, we're like indoors. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to test the first two as first. Kids, don't try this at home. Okay, yeah, I can feel the downdraft under them. The final step is we're gonna put these new, tougher 3D printed feet onto the quadcopter. Allison is helping me by tapping the holes so the screws will fit nicely. Uh, if I had more time, I would make some sort of spring-loaded wire foot, but these will work. Okay, she's ready to fly. And I've even got my different propellers color-coded so I know which ones go where when I assemble it out in the field. But before I fly anything, I better get some practice using the computer simulator. I found this program on the internet called Flying Model Simulator. It allows you to simulate flying models. I found a quadcopter object. Uh, my remote control doesn't actually work with the PC, but there's actually some remotes where you can actually plug it right into your computer and use the actual flight stick to control it. I'm using this Xbox controller. Uh, all right, so I got off the ground. So this should be, okay, yeah, that's my pitch. All right, so. It's weird, it kind of flies like an airplane, but also like a helicopter. Oh, I'm gonna, ah, oh, it crashed in the ocean. All right, here we go. Take off. It's a little different from how it's actually gonna work, because in the actual thing, you start with the throttle all the way down and you only even lift off until you get to halfway point. So that's gonna be a little different on the actual thing. So the right stick, forward and back, controls my pitch. Left and right controls my roll. And the left stick, left and right, should control my, my yaw, which would be the, if I can get off the ground, which would be the rudder on an uh, aeroplane. So if I go up like this. Whoa, ah, I crashed again. And bleh. <laughs> So here we are in the quadcopter's natural environment. Let's see if we can get this thing to fly. I'm not gonna go too high with it because I don't wanna lose it, but we'll definitely see if it works.
That wasn't a bad landing. So we were able to get this quadcopter project off the ground. I still need to work on my pilot skills, but hey, we did it. We built a quadcopter. And we didn't completely destroy it either, yet. Today's viewer question comes from Chad who asks, would it be possible to convert a PC power supply into a bench power supply instead of buying a dedicated box? Yes, it would, Chad, and I use one myself. PC power supplies have all the basic voltages you need and also provide a good deal of current. It's always a good idea to keep old PC power supplies around for projects such as this. Don't throw them away, don't recycle them, keep them. Eventually you'll need it. Thanks for watching. In our next episode, I'll show you how to get started with the MSP430 microcontroller from Texas Instruments using the Launchpad Development Kit. I've used the MSP430 in a few projects and it's a good tool to have in your microcontroller arsenal. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.